Are these the scriptures that you point to to say that you'll lose your salvation? Wow. Welcome back to the Smart Christian Channel. My name is Corey Miner. And if this is your first time or if you haven't done so already, please remember to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification. That way you'll be notified of any future videos. This old battle between can you lose your salvation or is one saved always saved oftentimes comes down to the way someone reads the Bible and their understanding. Sometimes, and this is one of the cases today where it's a, it's a case where you're just not finishing the reading. For example, in John 15, and I had this same problem where I formerly believe that you could lose your salvation. Reading John 15, it seems to tell me that clearly you lose your salvation. So let's look at the passage in John 15. Jesus said, I am the, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away and every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Drop down to verse four, he says, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. To verse six now, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. Well, that seems to be pretty clear. It, it seems to be crystal clear that if you don't abide in him, you will not bear fruit, and if you don't bear fruit, you'll be cut off. And once you're cut off, you will be withered and you'll be gathered and thrown into the fire. Is that what the passage says? Well, sure, that's exactly what the passage says. But wait a minute, Corey, I thought you said that you don't believe that you can lose your salvation. I don't. But isn't that what this chapter, this passage is talking about? No, it's not. Because what happens is we seem to stop. Sure, if you don't abide in him, and if you don't bear fruit, if you don't bear fruit, you'll be cut off and you'll be withered and thrown into the fire, right? So why are, why are you now saying, Corey, that this passage that seems to show that you could lose your salvation is not teaching that you can lose your salvation? Well, simple. Does this passage in John 15 end there? No, it doesn't. Let's keep reading a little bit. Verse nine, as the father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my father's commandments and I abide in his love. Let's drop down to verse 14, and then we're gonna see why this passage is not at all teaching that you can lose your salvation. As a matter of fact, it tells us that you will not be cut off, that you will not lose your salvation. Verse 14, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard from my father, I have made unto you. All right, here we go. Verse 16, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed, or some verses may say ordain you, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, Jesus is saying, I chose you rather than you choosing me. And on top of that, Jesus says, I appointed or ordained you to bear fruit. So true. If you don't bear fruit, you will be cut off. But Jesus is saying, I have appointed it so that you will indeed bear fruit, which means if you're bearing fruit, you're gonna be remaining in him, right? Well, the question becomes then, how much fruit should we be bearing? Obviously, that will differ from person to person. There are some people that you'll look at and you'll just see their fruit just flourishing. Fruit here, there, 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 there. And other people, it seems like this person is barely alive, barely hanging on, right? Well, that's not the point. That's not the issue that we should be looking at. Who is seemingly bearing more fruit than the next person? Because we don't want to get in the habit of comparing fruit because what ends up happening inevitably is while we're looking at that person's fruit, we forget that our fruit may not be the sweetest. Amen? Then there's another passage that for some reason people just aren't looking at in the light that the passage was given. That is Hebrews chapter 6. So let's go there. In chapter 6, verse 4, the writer says, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God 
and the powers of the age to come if they fall away to renew them to repentance since they crucify again for themselves the son of god and put to him or put him to an open shame so the question is doesn't this seem to say that you can fall away because it says if they fall away for one many greek students will tell you that this passage is really speaking in hypotheticals at this point now he's using these different participles and any greek student will tell you that that it is difficult as a matter of fact hard to simply read how often these participles take place in the new testament and sometimes it kind of overshadows what the book is or what the passages are talking about and so we get we get off a little bit too much into these particular participles but you don't need to be able to read or understand Greek to understand that he's speaking in hypotheticals. How do I know? Well, look at what he says. He says that if a person were to fall away, it would be impossible for that person to come back. So let me pause there for a second. The writer of Hebrews is writing to Jews who have accepted Christ as the Messiah who have placed this trusting faith in him. But what they remember is this, the old covenant way of atonement was that you had to do this year after year after year. And so, the, and so these Jews are thinking, well, this is what I know, and that this has to happen every year. And when I do something, when I sin, I'm not in good standing, and so I have to have this atonement to happen again. Well, as we read further on in Hebrews, and we won't, we won't do this right now, but as you read further on in Hebrews, you'll see that he talks about how what Jesus did, he did once and for all. There was no second time or third or fourth time or some yearly occurrence for this. There was no need for that to happen. It took one time, and so the writer is trying to comfort them, and he, but, he, but he gets hypothetical here, and he says, if you were to go through all those things, and if you were to fall away, you're not coming back. Because guess what? There is no yearly atonement. There won't be another day of atonement. There won't be another day of Christ getting on the cross again. You cannot uh, crucify him again. And so he's speaking hypothetically to make a point. If you think you can lose your salvation, well, game's over. You can't get it back. What we need to remember here are two things. One, you can't lose your salvation. And two, for those of you who think that you can, Every single verse, and I do mean every single verse that you would point to that seems to say that you can lose your salvation, there is an answer. Sometimes it's just maybe the person is reading into the scriptures. Sometimes they've just been taught that you can lose your salvation. So naturally, everything they see is meaning to say that you can lose your salvation. The race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but to the one who endures to the end. So see, you must endure to the end in order to be saved. But that's not even what that passage is talking about. We'll cover that later, but know this. There is not one passage, not one, that says so. I'm willing to even say, if I can't show you conclusively, if you want to leave it in the comments, ask a question, if I can't show you, if I can't give you an answer to every question, here's a challenge. If I can't show you how every passage that anyone says you cannot lose your salvation, if I can't show or demonstrate if that passage doesn't say that, I'll delete the channel. I'll go do something else. Why would I say that? Because all of these passages have been investigated and there are no passages that say you can't. 